Tibini Tele viewers, welcome to the solar edition of Prime Hour on My Media Prime. This evening we're going to be asking and answering the question as to why very little is being said about uh, Cameroon becoming an emerging nation by 2035. We understand that uh, some years back, almost every speech of uh, a minister or the president of the republic or whosoever uh, was uh, linked to working towards making Cameroon an emerging uh, nation, that is middle income nation, by 2035. But uh, for some time now, nobody is talking about it. Has it been, um, has it been uh, dumped in the dustbin? Or oh, the nation is working silently and uh, surely towards it. We also, if time permits, are going uh, to be looking at another topic which has to do with our city mayors. We know that in the past we had uh, government delegates but today, we know of those who are leading our major cities as uh, city mayors. What has actually changed since the coming of our city mayors in uh, Bermenda, in uh, Kumba, in uh, Limbe, in Douala, in Yaoundé, and across the national territory? Has anything changed? Uh, we are going to be finding out that with our panelists. Uh, Apostle Ambe Valentine Gua, our permanent consultant, is in the house with us. Uh, good evening. Apostle, we're glad to have you on Prime Hour this evening. Good evening, Mr. Leo. Good evening, Cameroonians. Welcome to this wonderful edition of Prime Hour. Uh, I want to say we are going to be analyzing the vision of an emergent 2035 Cameroon and uh, which has been the talk of so many people and different platforms have been complaining about the vision of the president uh, by Cameroon being a nation, uh, an emerging nation by the year 2035. Good evening to all those who are watching today's program. We also await uh, the arrival into our studio to be part of uh, this edition of the program of uh, Dr. Ako John Ako, who is a lecturer. He should be caught in traffic. We hope he joins us. Uh, to discuss on this uh, very important topic. Apostle Ambe Valentine, I will also still ask you, why according to you we've there been uh, getting less of um, mentions on Cameroon effectively becoming an emerging nation by 2035? Is it a new strategy? Mr. Liu, there's a difference between a wish and a vision. Mm. The statement Cameroon becoming an emerging nation in the year 2025 was a wish. 2035. 2035, sorry, was a wish. It's never been a vision because if it was a vision, the very first day that word was mentioned, practical strategies and measures were supposed to be put in place before every Cameroonian. I will quote a biblical uh, passage that says, write the vision, make it plain. He that reads will run with it. You told us that Cameroon has to be an emerging nation by 2035. What is the vision you put in front of Cameroonians? How, how explicit is this vision? Who are the persons to run with the vision? And who are the persons to relate with the vision? I think a visionary leader who has cast a vision before his people definitely will have to make the vision plain so that everybody come on board to make sure the dream becomes a reality. Making a slogan that Cameroon will emerge in 2035 was just a wish because if it's a vision i think a vision is a mental picture of the future you have to bring out the picture that predicts the future and if this picture is not well painted with everyone participating effectively in their respective domains to see this vision a reality practically you're going nowhere there's another passage of scripture that says that the lord gave the word but great was the company of those that published it the president must have caught a vision or a wish for Cameroon to emerge in 2035, but it is not his individual responsibility to make that dream a reality. He was definitely supposed to set up a team, both in both the, the ones who are going to make the dream a reality. But since the idea or the purpose or the wish of becoming an emerging nation in 2025 was a mere wish and not a vision, we don't have any clear-cut direction. We don't have any pathway. We don't have any specific directives on how to make this nation become an emerging nation by 2035. Because it will take stakeholders to make this nation an emerging nation in technology, in economics, in politics, in agriculture, in different domain infrastructure, those stakeholders were supposed to be brought in place 
put on the ground and then give them a mental picture of the future and then everybody now gets to work we now know that okay beginning from this time before 2035 in the agricultural sector technology science economics politics and name it infrastructure we must have achieved this but since that statement was made there is no clear cut vision so i think yeah, but, it was but, but, but we cannot say uh, no there is no vision because there is a national development strategy a paper that was made public uh, by uh, the government of cameroon that actually gives a roadmap as to how things are going to be uh, done and uh, including what we see today, uh, like the construction of major dams, which is also a part of that. But I'm sure we're going to be looking at uh, some of the points that are outlined in that uh, growth and development uh, paper for Cameroon. It is a very voluminous uh, document, I'm sure. I was uh, present when it was, uh, it was introduced and uh, made public to the nation. Um, can we really say it is not a vision because you say make it plain write it down that this document does exist either but, reads or run with it yes but 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 in the past so many persons were talking about it of course but why is no longer talking because the, doc the document actually exists mr leo people get excited people get fantasized mm -hmm. when things are shared the burden that passion the zeal for that thing came up and everybody embraced and were excited when you discover that something begins to die down it means the thing has proven to be abortive the thing has not given the flair it has not given the 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 the, the impact that they expected and uh, so that's the reason why i'm telling you that it was just a mere wish because it was actually a vision people would have gone to work for instance we have a lot of things that started in this nation ooh, like flames of fire and they are dying you would tell me that the anglophone crisis also is going down to a certain level because the fire is going down it's the same thing this idea of an emerging 2025 is 2035. just 2035 yes, yes. and even 2025 35 is a wish it's not a vision because the desire the passion that energy is dying down is dying down because what people were expecting they are not seeing it they are not seeing it so the reason why you see most people are no longer talking about it because it's no longer news yeah, but people talk what is news what is making rounds what is trending okay. so the thing is no longer trending so since it's not trending people don't talk about it okay but um just to inform our televiewers that uh, that, that document does exist um which shows very clearly what the government intended and is uh, also uh, doing to ensure that the nation becomes an emerging a nation by 2035, uh, making Cameroon a middle-income country. Uh, the President of uh, the Republic's Excellency, President Paul Bia, has transformed Cameroon into a work site. I'm sure we all uh, were aware where we were talking about um, Le Grand Chantier. Uh, giant uh, work sites across our nation economic emergence that is a country that creates and distributes wealth fairly a country that offers equal development opportunities to all a country with strong and sustainable growth a country with enhanced food security in a world a country that ensures happiness for us for all but the challenges are immense uh, the meeting and meeting them requires total and unwavering commitment from all the Cameroonians uh, in towns and villages uh, within and outside the country. Cameroonians in the diaspora, most of them graduates of prestigious uh, schools. Uh, okay, the document exists. Dr. Ako, John Ako, we are glad to have you joining us in this uh, discourse. Um, what would account for the fact that we no longer hear about vision? 2035. Is it the fact that okay, Cameroon is now confronted with so many uh, problems? Boko Haram is up north. We have the anglophone crisis and uh, many other things. Maybe these things are still in the show and uh, not making the nation focus on the objectives set. Yeah, once more, Mr. Leo, it's a pleasure once more eh, being with you and sharing this program also for his um, eloquent. Apostle Lambe, it's been a long time sharing the same uh, platform. We are talking Cameroon, and it is not news, and it is not, let me say, new, that Cameroonians have been used to a lot of what I call empty uh, promises, vacant political agenda set up by the New Deal, 
we are starting with what we said in 1982, rigor and moralization. And I believe when rigor and moralization was set as the agenda of the head of state, it is 41 years now, if Cameroonians can read well, that 41 years after Cameroon has a negative, a negative transcript or report on rigor and moralization, just witnessing the, the happenings within government ranks, the happening within Cameroonians, the civic education standard, the moral standards of Cameroonians are falling every day, not even by individual, but at times when such standards are orchestrated from members of the administration or administrative or government agencies that are supposed to protect individuals. And again, somewhere, you realize that a lot of people, when we look at it, like fighting corruption, which the head of state equally made mention just last 31st uh, December. December yeah. Yes, we are thinking that after this particular, we are in February, if that the promises were not political, actions are supposed to have been taken. That is the same promise that was made in 2022, 2021. And again, we are still living on such promises. Agenda 2035, when, uh, like when the Chinese said that China was to emerge in the year 2000, it was not just an agenda. It was not just a political slogan. There are ambitions, there are missions, there are objectives, and even there are standards which somewhere, the norms, how to evaluate to what extent we have gone and what have we done, what haven't we done, where have we gone wrong, what is left for us to be done, what, where have we arrived. If you ask the government again that from that period when the promise was made, when the document Yes, government brought out a lot of documents, Operation 20, Agenda 2035. But if you ask them now, what have we achieved? I will tell you that water still remains a problem. Energy, the head of state mentioned in his end of year speech, still remains a problem. And now 2035 is no longer as further as we're thinking. We realize that it has been more closer to us than ever, ever before. This 2023, meaning if we have to rate ourselves in 11 year's time or so, Cameroonians are thinking that we have emerged in 2035. That is why we are saying that a nation is better with leaders with vision. Visions which are attainable if not of our own egoistic and self-centered tendencies. You are here when we talk of agenda, even when papers are written, we are talking of the Olympic Stadium, when we had all the ambitions that it was going to host a five-star hotel. Some people are telling us right now that the hotels have been developed already underground and that the day they will come over, they will know that the plants were done. We are still expecting 2035, there is no commission. I don't think there is any other commission like was said for bilingualism, disarmament, <laughs> and many others for the commission for the development of the north, the Bakasi area, and many. We are expecting that maybe there was a bureau that the head of state has created and the leader chosen within the government that we are going to evaluate time and again, one year after. Auto route Douala Yaoundé is 10 years now. We are still expecting if we can use that particular route. Just imagine that the other ambition, the other ambition that were made just the last of last year's speech, we need to see an international airport in Tiko and Kribi. And so we are thinking that since it was a yearly agenda, by the end of 2023, we are going to factor out to what extent the Tiko International Airport is going to operate and that in Kribi attainable. These are uh, the type of politics somewhere you find when a party, when a single party manages and consider all those who criticize him as enemies to the nation and that those who are of the opposition are said to be non-partisan or non-patriotic, unpatriotic citizens. This is where it leads us to because people are telling you that it will work. I just want to tell you again that one of those greatest failures, the head of state mentioned at the end of his speech that negotiations will continue and that there is a need to seek for a peaceful resolution of the anglophone problem. But yes. somewhere, you still find the same government coming to tell you that there is no talking, there is no dialogue, and they are not talking with anybody. When a system is too old and outdated, some people use uh, some other uh, example that the brain of such a government has become obsolete. When a system is obsolete, that is why you hear that those who have even invented products, time and again companies renew products, even if they don't renew, they give it a new name so that those who are consuming should know that it's a new product. But in Cameroon, I'm telling you that the same friends that were there in 1950, 1970 are the same friends that are still ruling. And we ask, if you are a leader of a particular age, 
where are you leading the new generation? In a nation where you have 60% of the population made of the youths, and then you find more of the elderly people, I mean the elders are still in office, mm -hmm. then an agenda okay. like 2035, which concerns more emergence, mm -hmm. where we need to emerge, then the youths need to emerge. Does the government have such ambitions to understand that the world will think that only agriculture will pay? Then countries like North uh, South Korea wouldn't have emerged. Okay. It's not an agricultural land. Three countries like Japan, they wouldn't have emerged. They did not emerge from agriculture. Okay. There is a new way of thought. If we need to emerge, we need to take the economy otherwise. I want us to look at uh, some of the general objectives of uh, the paper that was made public uh, to Cameroon uh, telling how we were going to emerge in 2035. Uh, the general objectives are reducing poverty to minimal levels, uh, becoming a middle income country, becoming a newly industrialized uh, country, and consolidating democracy and enhancing national unity. Um, these were done on the agricultural and environmental pool. Here we have environment, environmental protection, ecosystem preservation, agricultural revolution to usher in the second generation agriculture and the industrial and processing pool we had a construction of thermal power plants uh, construction of hydroelectric uh, dams uh, construction of the creepy gas plant uh, to generate sufficient electricity for the country's economy establishment of and management of small and medium-sized uh, uh, enterprises uh, services and new technology uh, pool here we have improving the level of transport infrastructure, road, rail, sea, etc. Uh, we have improving hospitals, healthcare centers, developing basic education, increasing the number of schools and nursery, primary and secondary, technical and vocational education institutions, uh, improving the supply of academic uh, university and vocational training, uh, increasing the supply of social and telephone communication, fixed line and mobile, ensuring high-speed internet access and social networks, okay? Governance pool, uh, sound and rigorous management of public finances, continuation of the messless fight against corruption and misappropriation of public funds. We're going to be looking at how government has put all of that into motion uh, for us to get this... Uh, general objectives of reducing uh, poverty to minimal levels, becoming a middle-income uh, country, becoming a newly industrialized country, and consolidating democracy and enhancing national uh, unity. Let's look at um, the government's efforts so far since the, the essence is for Cameroon to become an emerging nation by 2035, uh, reducing poverty to minimal uh, levels. Uh, do you see us moving towards the line that is uh, creating a more, more, more economically viable Cameroonians. What have you done so far to reduce poverty or to minimize poverty? Because things are getting worse. If you ask any average Cameroonian now, they will tell you life is more difficult than ever before. As a matter of fact, things we used to buy in those days cheaply, we are getting now very, very difficult. The standard of living has dropped because people can no longer afford the things they used to buy in the past because things have become very expensive. There's equal inflation and devaluation of the currency, thereby causing Cameroonians to buy, use so much money to buy very little things to manage for themselves. That poverty rate has not been managed in any way because the minimum wage has increased by 5,000 francs and fuel has increased, that is, let's say, minimum wage increased by 5%. And then the fuel increased by 13%, making life again more difficult. Coming back to other basic commodities, Cameroonians find it difficult to even feed three square meals a day because life has become very tough. Job opportunities are not even there. Employment rate is very, very low. The standard of living has fallen very low. So I don't think the idea of minimizing poverty has been achieved so far. What are the mechanisms that they have put in place to even help reduce poverty? There is no picture on ground that is showing us in the nearby future we're going to curb poverty. Because one of the ways to curb poverty is to improve in different sectors of life like agriculture. Agriculture in Cameroon has not developed at the industrial level. Processing sector of the Cameroon has not developed. Technology has not developed. Industry has not developed. We don't have even the private sector of the nation is not well developed to the extent that it can even accommodate 
a greater part of the population. Cameroon government has the capacity to employ at least 350,000 Cameroonians in a population of 26 million people. Not even up to a tenth of that population can be employed by the government. And now the private sector is very, very weak. In addition to that, much money has been invested in fighting a senseless war that has taken more people to the graves. It has even closed the communities that were giving people opportunity to do proper farming at a very, very, very wide scale. Production of beans and other foodstuffs in the northwest and the southwest has greatly dropped. Production of cocoa and coffee in those areas have dropped. The war which was supposed to be managed to bring peace, to create a conducive atmosphere for business to thrive, education to thrive, I can tell with all sincerity, they have not done anything possible to curb the crisis, but thereby making more farmers to migrate into urban areas instead of staying in the rural areas to develop cash and food crops. Now, even to have food to eat is difficult because those who are doing the production of food at the local level and at the rural areas, they have been chased out of those communities. Cocoa, farm cocoa, they are getting rotten in the farm. Plantains are getting rotten because people can no longer access their farms anymore. The insecurity has not only reduced the flow of income, it has equally reduced the flow of foodstuffs. Export has dropped because the export is based on the production on ground. People can no longer export because production has equally dropped. The insecurity on ground has affected businesses because many businessmen have lost their businesses. The enterprises have collapsed. And even the huge sector, which is the PAMOL and the CDC, that used to give mega employment to farmers that help their children go to school, the great corporations of CDC and PAMOL, they have gone down. So it's to let you understand that we are even moving from bad to worst in the name of emerging 2035. I think that peace and security is a fundamental requirement for prosperity and growth. That is why there is a verse of scripture that says in Psalm 122 verse 6, it says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem, for they shall prosper that dwell therein. Mm -hmm. So if there is peace in an environment, prosperity is inevitable. Mm -hmm. But when there is no peace, prosperity is very, very far-fetched. I can tell you that if you go and check the tons of cocoa we used to produce from the southwest, mm -hmm. it has dropped. Coffee has dropped. The things we used to produce from the northwest, like cabbage, beans, corn, they have all dropped because of insecurity. Now, if basic food that we used to produce to feed ourselves and also serve as input, because the whole of Central Africa is fed by Cameroon, Gabon, Ikitura, Guinea, Central African Republic. Cameroonians import beans, take beans from north and sup supply to Congo. I have friends who load camions of beans to go and supply in Congo because Congo does not have beans that we have in Cameroon. Now, look at all what is on ground with the insecurity. People are not even able. A friend of mine told me that he invested in 35 hectares of corn around the Dunga Mantu division because of the crisis they abandoned it that's to let you understand that we are more into a mess than the emergence okay we are in a mess uh, than the emergence uh, dr Ako john Ako wants us to look at um uh, sound and rigorous management of public finances uh, continuation of the messless fight against corruption and misappropriation of public funds uh, involvement of all institutions tasked with fighting this uh, scourges, the National Anti-Corruption Commission, uh, uh, the National Agency for Financial Investigation, the Audit Bench, the Special Criminal Court. Um, how effective has this uh, been so far to ensure that we keep our, our, our finances in order to raise enough funds to be able to finance uh, this giant project that would uh, permit Cameroon to become a middle-income economy? Yeah, we, one of the things I said at the very beginning, mm -hmm. the head of state systematically has been calling the fight against corruption. And some people would think that corruption means embezzlement. In a corruption situation, we should understand that somebody has kept, has given, and another person has taken. Mm -hmm. In an embezzlement situation, finances are made available for other projects, but some people decided to swing or switch it in their favor. So one of the things we need to know in Cameroon today is that the much of what we have been seeing, we have been seeing cases against embezzlers. There is still, uh, we are still waiting for a case that involves corruption. Cameroonian by themselves are willing to give, and always and every time people are willing to take. Now, to what extent has government managed the state finance, technically, legally, by institutions, the government has been doing properly well. I mean, when you get on the CONAC, you mm -hmm. find CONAC in all ministries. When you go to ANIF, that's the National Agency for Financial Investigation, you find them regularly on regular checks. Then you find somebody like Interpol, which Cameroon is a member. 
to track the movement of finances, people should not mix up. These institutions are existing. At the level of the presidency of the Republic, you find somebody they call supreme state control. Somebody in charge of controlling the state account at the level of the presidency. Then you find it's them a, up the bench. It's, it's a ministry, minister delegate. Yes, mm -hmm. at the presidency, in charge of supreme state control. I said, when you go again at the level of the National Assembly or the Senate, you find the financial committee. Then you get to the Supreme Court. You find the audit bench of the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. In all these instances, if Cameroon was to be heaven, this institution would have said there is no way to steal. There is no way to embezzle. But what is happening? Remember what happened in Olimbe, what happened in Japuma, that a bag of cement that ordinarily cost at the time 4,500 was sold at 16,400. And that a trip of sand at almost 700,000, which ordinarily was at 70,000. Meaning somewhere, just adding a zero behind gives you a different figure. And that's how the projects were sponsored. Who offered or who granted such contracts and to who? That when government purchases an article, it goes more than 10 times the ordinary price. And that when individual citizens are purchasing, it should be sold at the market value. Mm -hmm. So to what extent can we grant such projects and we are still proud of fighting corruption? To what extent has ministers, state, individual, visited institutions and contracts under construction and move out without maybe what we call French benefit? They will tell you that it's only a service. And so at the end of the day, the director or the manager, whosoever is in charge of the project, knows now that they are here and that an envelope has to be given. So to what extent are projects not abandoned? The delayance in many projects is that there are no finances. Mm -hmm. But people will tell you that that project, well, uh, expenditure or budget has been exhausted already. This is where we are. If really we evaluate ourselves and that keeping finance of the government, one of the highest worry this present government is having now, we need to know. How much and how many people have been arrested on corruption? How much have they given? And to whom and in which account that money first has been kept? Cameroonians are getting tired because it doesn't warrant only just to arrest somebody for embezzlement. One of the interestment people are saying, like you see, when the case of Akhtanakuna came over, Cameroonians were saying somewhere, anywhere, he even gave one point something billion. So it was even reasonable. And those others who are behind bars, what are they doing there? If they have the money, simply tell them. We were talking of what happened, what happened in Mali of recent. Would I see me go there? What did they do? Say so for those who have taken, just go here and drop the money. And people are happy that at the end of the day, what was raised was declared. Cameroonians, if money has entered on corruption, Cameroonians are supposed to know that the woman, the, the, the interim uh, president in Tanzania, annulling the national day and what the budget was tilted to. All citizens are aware, but the uncertainty of fighting corruption in Cameroon remains what I call a political rhetoric rather than a reality. Many Cameroonians are sick and tired of singing the song, an embezzler, of singing the song, a corrupt official. When we know somewhere that a lot of those who are arrested have somewhere a politically motivated agenda that they might have had in their agenda, fighting and coming back to take part. What does it mean? For you to say somebody is in Kuwait, somewhere at Kondengi, and at that Kuwait apartment in Kondengi, he has a servant. They iron his dresses and does things for him, dry clean for him. He reads his books, sleeps well, go out for sports, and then come back and drink the most expensive wine even those in liberty don't have access to. What makes you feel that such a person is under a prison or loss of liberty for corruption? When he still lives a more expensive bad days have been celebrated at Konegi, and we have seen the level of such a bad day. Dignitaries also visited Konegi that very day to have the bad day celebrated. Fathers and others, uh, ecclesiastics, have gone to prison to celebrate a mass in favor of the bad day of the elites. So, somewhere you realize that keeping the finances of a state remains a political rhetoric. Somewhere we have mentioned that creating Konak, creating an if Interpol. Uh, supreme state control wouldn't have bypassed one small article 66 of the constitution which we said was going to start with the head of state mm -hmm. we need to know for us to control the finances of the state we need to know how much starting with the president how much he earns as a salary how much is he having in his account 
and by the time he's leaving, or he's not intending to leave, but every year that we do the president of the United States, if you ask Americans, they will tell you that he has made 750 million US dollars and has used this for charity. What is left in the account is this amount. This is what we call financial transparency, accountability as an aspect of good governance. If Cameroon now want to emerge, really, you cannot emerge without fighting financial fraud. When you go to a state like China, they don't condole. Embezzlement is loss of liberty or, in fact, a death sentence. So you are given a death sentence for stealing and mingling with state money. Even when such enterprises are private enterprises, meaning in Cameroon, you can steal within a private company, you will go free. You can only be charged for corruption when you are uh, of the state agent. Mm -hmm. So many companies have broken down, gone into liquidation. The government has not asked questions uh, uh, because uh, such companies were private. So the fight against corruption still remains, as I said, uh, a political uh, rhetoric Apostle, rather um, than a reality. Apostle Lambi, we want to emerge by 2035, uh, according to the uh, what was said by the President of uh, the Republic. Um, and uh, it is clearly stated that uh, there is going to be a continuation of the messless fight against corruption and misappropriation of public funds, uh, citing the institutions that have been put in place to make sure that that uh, is done. How messless has this fight been since? You are now witnesses to a lot that happened in the country and the nation, the, the government has given deaf ears to them. For instance, the COVID gate. You and I were here when much money was given for COVID-19 to be fought from the IMF. Yes, but many persons have been have, have, have been uh, are being investigated for that. You are talking about investigation. We are talking about people being arrested. I don't think if at all money is given to Mr. Kum to endorse a deal, Mr. Kum fails to endorse it, they should be investigating people. They should be able to know that Mr. Kum is responsible for this. This thing we are rigmaroling. Wangling left or right and say we are doing investigation, we are just playing with time. Because I think the government knows the hands through which those finances passed. Even the IMF was forced to send an investigative team to come to the nation and find out what that money was used for. Till date, we are yet to find out where the money went to and through who that money disappeared. And then they went again and collected much loan and then came back again from the IMF and the IMF was still borrowing the money knowing fully whether the first one that was given was embezzled. Secondly, we were to be the Olembe Sports Complex, not a stadium. <laughs> Olembe Sports Complex. Sports Complex means different, different activities were to take place there from volleyball to basketball to swimming hotels. to lawn tennis, hotels being built in that Bangers place as a gigantic sport complex that would have been a force to reckon with in the continent Africa. Yet, we are not even done with the stadium. The stadium has been a major challenge until we were close to hosting the Nations Cup in this country when the stadium was not even finished. And then finally, pressure was mounted until they finished the stadium. Where is the amount of money that was left aside to manage and build an entire complex? Are they telling us that they don't know the hands through which all that finance passed through? That is the drama we are still playing in Cameroon to date. That we know criminals and we cover them. We know those who have done things that are not good, we cover them. And you tell us that they are fighting against corruption. How do we fight against corruption? When people embezzle money, embezzle billions of, 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 of France CFA, and they are freely working in the streets of Cameroon, so yeah, but, 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 but they need to be proven as having uh, stolen the billions, Mr. Liu. Mm -hmm. The work is not done, and the money was given to the hands of individuals, and the time frame that was given for that job has not been accomplished. The fact that you were giving this money to accomplish this task at this particular time and you did not was supposed to have kept you behind bars. According to the protocols of work and contract, if somebody gives you a contract and with the time frame you accept to execute that job, you don't do it, you are supposed to keep behind bars whether you still have the money in your account or not. The persons were given a time frame to finish that complex with the amount of money given to their hands. If to date they have not finished the complex and the money is nowhere to be found, that is enough proof. What investigation do they need again to carry out? The individuals who were supposed to be uh, in charge of that complex were supposed to be behind bars right now. They were supposed to be investigating them from behind bars because they are already given for not accomplishing this task at the given time. Yeah, but I'm not sure the law works that way. You you condemn before uh, proving them guilty. Mr. Liu, a lot of people have been arrested for, for as being suspects mm. and kept behind bars while investigations are going on. Okay. Um, Dr. Aku, John Aku, uh, one of the 
the the the the, 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 the things with that were also set in place was uh, or the aims are improving the level of transport infrastructure, road, rail, and sea. I'm sure air, air also. How far would you uh, rate what has been ongoing so far? Yeah, you. It should be sensitive. I believe we just said it's like the transport network has been more ambitious mm -hmm. than we have ever thought. Remember, the head of state told us that by 2025, there was going to be a high-speed train between Douala and Yaoundé. So we don't know whether, as he mentioned this year, for the airport Tiko Kribi, the railway might come in 2024. So let's just think that on the road infrastructure, he equally visited saying that Cameroon might have gained over 300,000 um, kilometers of road or 300,000 something of that nature constructed already. So we were asking, I came here on that same uh, period, we were saying that when you look at the roads in Douala for the past budgetary session, does it even give us an idea that the road has been renewed anywhere? When you look at what we talk of Baba and Jubameda, which came in his speech, the, in fact, we're talking of the ring road. Now we are talking of Baba and Jubameda. We have forgotten that there was going to be a road that was to link all the six or seven divisions of the Northwest region. Mm -hmm. That agenda has been closed. Now we are talking of Baba and Jubameda, more than four or five times that project has been halted because of one thing or the other. We are talking equally of the road from Yaoundé to Simalen, which has taken us a, a lot of billions. We are talking of the road to Rutuala Yaoundé. To what extent has the head of state succeeded to modernize the road network in Cameroon is still questionable. When you look at a town like Douala, we look at the measurement of roads that were constructed in 19, 1930 or 1970, 1990 and look at the roads that are constructed just before the african cup of nations it is totally uh, uh, it's downgrading i mean those roads that were constructed the african nation cup some have been degraded already than even roads that were constructed in 19 in the year 2000. so when you look at the measurement even the dimensions of the road you think like the roads in douala should have the same load like the roads maybe in sang malima because the dimensions have not changed and the quality has not changed when you look at the traffic in some major towns, we are talking of Douala, Yaoundé. In fact, it is a pity. If we are modernizing our roads, it is very normal that when you leave the Douala International Airport, you should have a tramway which will be linked to all the various road networks. Meaning there should be a tramway linked to the airport that links us to any part of the country that we are going. There should equally be access to motorable roads. But is this what we are seeing? Cameroonians are even shocked that leaving the airport just about 50 meters after you find yourself already that we are in a jungle rather than in a nation or a town that is said to be economic economic capital it is but sad that to this extent the head of state still lives by reports because they will always give him reports we are still to expect him to visit the auto route and make some measure road infrastructure today we are being told of modernizing our toll gates and you need to see the budget this is where I've seen like government is a bit going faster. And we ask, why so fast in modernizing toll gates? I mean, we have now electronic toll gate. The one we're expecting on that test is on the uh, Dea Kribi Highway. And we'll be expecting maybe Tiko uh, Douala Highway, another modern electronic. We are also expecting Douala Bafusam to have an electronic gateway. Why are these ones going very actively implemented? Why, where the roads are supposed to be constructed are not done. Is it that our government is always very active towards implementing financial options that bring in budget to the states than when he's supposed to spend? We ask Cameroonians that a government without a responsibility over his people is a less visionary government. For us to govern roads, they will tell you that when a road passes, development follows. People will never settle there will be no settlement or even sparsely where there is poor road network as compared to where there, is, there are roads, uh, roads uh, uh, highly constructed. When we look at Dubai, some people have traveled more than we have done. Governments, agents, and uh, personnel are going into missions. They have gone to smaller nations and they have seen the size, the quality of the roads, the lightning system. People have avoided dating towns with cable crossing from one head house to another. When we talk of modernization, there is a new method of wiring. Today we are talking, and maybe 
in the domain of environment, they were going to tell us about sustainable development. In sustainable development, we search for other alternatives. In street lighting, we were talking of that in other forums. Mm -hmm. But if you imagine that in our country, we are still talking of putting, uh, how can I call, electric poles on iron and all the like, when today we know that we are moving towards solar, okay. renewable energy. Can the state look at it? Because one of the highest problems we have again on our roads is insecurity. Mm. The roads are literally very small, very crooked, and too narrow. What have we done with this? And it is normal. Getting an accident that Cameroonians have died becomes normal. And at the end of the year, we just visit how many people died just last year, and they will tell you it has reduced. But they, have not, they will not tell you that it's just zero. We need to save life in the present situation. For that to be done, there's a need for modernizing our road network. In towns, likewise, some cities are electrified from one city to another. A road like that of Douala Yaoundé was supposed to have 100% electricity. That's what happened in other nations. Those who are driving with poor lighting system can depend on the state provided security system by the light to drive. So why can't we bring such aspect here? They exist in other nations. In road infrastructure, I'm telling you that it's one of the areas maybe this government still need to work on. If Cameroon need to emerge. Yes, uh, the transport section uh, as a as sector as a whole, we're talking about a rail, a sea, and uh, land yeah. transport air. Do you think with what is going on, the pace at which things are being uh, done is uh, going to drive Cameroon towards meeting its uh, 2035 uh, vision? Uh, Mr. Alou, from references in other African countries like Nigeria, Senegal, mm. first and foremost, the rail transport in Cameroon is analog. Senegal is entering into the metro system, which is a European standard. They Nigeria into, into mm. metro system, which is mm. European standard. Uh, Cameroon is yet to first and foremost construct the first metro railway in this country. First, secondly, the former railways are not even, I mean, uh, properly structured because I believe since what the Germans constructed in this country and left, that's what we are still hanging on. Our trains, by the first, uh, 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 in the first place, they are not of standard. Most of the trains in the country are very old trains in this country. We cannot even boast of a real transport system in this country. That is to be sincere. Because in those days when we had something like Kamrai, which was very, very fresh, you will see fathers who boast that they worked in Kamrai. But there is nothing like Kamrai today in the picture. The Kamrai today just left with names and titles. And everybody you see will tell you of the Kamrai around the 70s, 80s. They can't tell you of the Kamrai of today. That is to let you understand that we do not have a rail system. The worst is the shipping line. Cameroon does not boast of any shipping line in this country, except individuals who have fishing boats in the high sea and the Chinese who have come with their fishing boats to extract all the fishes in our sea we don't have any credible transport line all the ships that come to this country they bring things from out of the country these ships are owned by british people americans christians and they transport things into this country from my experience i've also realized that our seashores are controlled by foreigners who bring their ships from outside the country to run the cameroon shipping line we used to have in the country is nowhere to be found coming to air transport we used to be a very very reputable uh, airline in cameroon i once traveled one time and i landed at the leomba international airport in libreville they used to tell me how when cameco is loading for france every other airline goes out of market there was a a a, a huge turnout when it the time of uh, uh, this guy called uh, Futsu, this photo of a guy, even Chef Futsu, when he was running Kameko, when you go to Libreville, Lomba International Airport, in the evening, every Thursday and Monday, Kameko is taking off. If Kameko is not full, no other airline takes off because he had the opportunity to take aircraft from other countries, brand them with Cameroon Airlines, and they use them for transportation, then pay royalties to those associations but this time around we don't cannot even boast of an international airline that runs out of this country the airlines we brought in this the aircraft we brought in this country they are running from here to Douala Douala to Yaoundé Yaoundé Marwa I have flown from here to Yaoundé not once not twice not thrice with the aircraft we 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 have internal flights from here to Yaoundé Yaoundé to Marwa and that's how we are circulating I went one time to travel and I took Kameko we went at the airport and somebody said on a pair Kameko air petard. It means the, the, the airline that by chance yeah. you can fly. 
So yeah. you describe that the pro the management of the airline and the facilities and the infrastructure of the airline is not good enough for an airline company. If at all we are going to develop a good transport company in this country, first and foremost, the, the individuals who are managing those transport companies are supposed to be very competent business people. But the unfortunate aspect is that we take captains and we take graduates from Enam and put them to manage an airline. Airline system is not an administrative structure you sit in an office. It's a business-oriented enterprise where we need a business mugu with an international mindset in economics to manage an airline. But the managers of the airline in Cameroon are people who consider say, look, Captain, this is now the new director of Cameco. What has Captain got to do with Cameco? Now, yes, but, but what about the pace of uh, realization of uh, our road uh, projects? What road projects? No, yeah. we, we have given ourselves a target that by this time we need to we need to emerge as a nation, middle income uh, nation, and uh, surely we have given ourselves uh, targets as to. The, the the kilometers that we would want to uh, get that or worked upon by this time do you see us meeting this target it is absolutely impossible for us to reach that target why i say so is because i have seen a country taken by an individual within five years and it became a middle income economy mm. since the idea of an emerging Cameroon by 2035 came up is more than five years Magufuli took five years and turned Tanzania into a middle income economy by bringing six aircraft back into the Tanzanian airline, constructing roads, bridges, and railways almost everywhere, recovering mines in Tanzania. The sources of income in this country that was supposed to develop, that was supposed to develop the money we need to carry out emergency in 2025, they are nowhere to be found. A country that intends to emerge by 2025 should not be running after IMF for more loans. We are getting deep into loans and we are expecting to emerge how? One of the things that Magufuli did that helped Tanzania to do was that he boycotted the loans that came from IMF and other organizations. I'm sure we're supposed to be generating sources of income in this country that would have limited us from collecting loans. Do you know that as it stands now, Cameroon is still in the position of collecting another loan from the IMF again? What are we taking these loans to do? The problem is not being bad taking them because borrowing is not a crime. They're borrowing to rightly invest it, even in scriptures. A woman was asked to borrow, to invest, not to borrow anymore. But when we borrow in the country, we don't do anything with the money, and we keep accumulating debt that the fourth, fifth, and sixth generation are yet to pay. So I don't see the dream of emerging in 2025 become a reality because the infrastructures that we are supposed to put in place to emerge, they are nowhere to be found. I see the Naounde Auto Roots that was mentioned some years back. We are still to get any picture. You and I were here when the mention of the Bamenda Ring Road till date, which is a very good road, not just for the development of Norway, but it's a good commercial axle that would have served as a purpose to increase business in that part of the country. And you and I know when business increases, which is the private sector, the country also emits because the government benefits taxes and other opportunities. But now, if at all, the things that are even supposed to create the business channels are being they are blocked, what do you expect us to advance? It's absolutely impossible to emerge by 2035, except we're going to do an overhaul of the entire system and then set a pace for new leaders to take up responsibility. There is a possibility within the five years to come, ten years to come, for Cameroon to emerge. But it depends on the brain sitting behind the emergence. Okay, it depends on the brain. Yes, maybe, uh, okay. maybe to add uh, mm -hmm. to maybe... I'm telling you that one of, if Cameroonian, the Cameroon government, like Cameroonian people need to emerge, government need to cut down state expenditure. Okay. It is quite alarming that if a car is not new from Pichot, we don't use. That government officials have more Prados that individual businessmen own. It, uh, I, I ask the question, do we really need Prados or rough cut for those who are set to do or execute police work? Police work in some countries we see people with motorbikes, starlets in Cameroon. You see a police car driving in Prados and rough cars. Do we know how much it costs a state to maintain automobile of such standards? We have seen nations and even leaders of states with cars lower than those of Cameroonians running within the government. You go to the state budget, there is a budget permanently for automobile. And we want first class cars from Europe because we have colonial agreements that such cars must come from specific producers. If we need this country to grow, the agenda to get Cameroon emerge, we stop the borrowing and cut down state budget. We have conferences that are organized each time 
foreign visit, medical evacuations for top government officials. What becomes of a poor Cameroonian that does not have the means to go abroad for medical treatment? We need to build a medical infrastructure. Some people talk of un a, a, a universal coverage, health coverage. Cameroon is capable of doing that. If we can liquidate even some of the cars and automobiles that government owns today, Cameroon will be a better country. We need that money to develop this particular environment. Which, uh, what are people talk of? The, the National Day. Oh God. Imagine when they decided this year that there was going to be no parties in everybody's residence. Imagine the fever people went through. People had plans already. And now, a country that is thinking of emerging, go to the state budget, even that of this particular 2023, and look how much we put in for the military and how much we put in for agriculture, science, technological development, how much budget have we ever done fit in in those departments. We want to emerge. You want to emerge being a consumption economy rather than a country that is supposed to be based on production, modern technology of production. I have said even agriculture, there is what we call third generation agriculture. That meaning even in your room, you can grow mushrooms. Even in your room, you can grow snails. Yes. We need not move in the forest again to find snails. Are we ready to witness such changes? Vegetables. You can have a small compound of 50 meters square, but the vegetable coming out from it is what hectares of land. Are we ready to get onto this tertiary level of agriculture that Cameroon will emerge? We need to start spending money in the areas that are necessary. The Ministry of Tourism is the least in terms of budgeting in Cameroon. But countries like Kenya, Tanzania, South Africa are very proud of tourism. What do we lack to make ecotourism a reality in Cameroon? People look at tourism as a last side because they have no idea like I, I made mention of the obsoleteness yes, of the you're, new Yes, you're getting, you're getting to that. But uh, there is uh, also the objective of uh, developing the agricultural and environmental pool. That is environmental protection, ecosystem preservation, agricultural revolution to usher in uh, the second generation agriculture. Um, the government, the president of the republic, persistently has made mention of uh, the need to embrace agriculture. agriculture eh? yeah. Yes. Yes, that is what I said here. Mm -hmm. If we have an agenda for agriculture, what love have we made the generation to feel that really there's a need for agriculture? That today, others were not aware that the red oil, which was said to be purely used for cooking, has industrial purposes now. That the chicken that we used to use, we call it local breeded fowl, mm -hmm. that now has an industrial purpose. The restaurants have increased. That may not need just the local fowl, they need it in tons. What have we done? That agriculture is not made compulsory in school, but we insisted, and we have been insisting, that if you have not passed English language, you will not go to the university. A country want to emerge by <laughs> studying a foreign language. We have not said the English language is not good. Why not make things which we think that they are basic? Today in South Korea, students go to school with no back, because academic has gone what? Smart. Every child is set to study from his smart, uh, uh, smart cool. tablet. And so they get to school with tablet and does everything with tablet. Punishment is to send you to the lab and build out a toy game for your own mates. But today, when we remove corporal punishment, what are the consequences of using? Students have started fighting their own teachers. They bottle them out because they feel they have no right to talk. After all, there is a law that says don't beat children again. We are aware. And that civilization comes to them, has come to them more than we did in the past. When I told my child that we were heavily flogged, and I don't know if we were not flogged, what might have happened? That a teacher had three canes to flog you at the same time, and things that we you one cane was not enough. I, I, we used to think that the fear of the discipline master is the beginning of oh, wisdom. Yeah. And that's why we're in school being the very quiet boys. Today, instead, they are told that they should not be beaten. And we have seen the concept. When we see a teacher, you need to hide because we are not supposed to be found there. But today we drink in bars and we even toast with our own students because they have said it's a modern world. And we complain that they don't do what is right. If we need to emerge, agriculture, what we call agriculture, agriculture today is not the one of a hoe, a matchet, and a box of matches, and maybe palm kernels or palm chaps for you to go and light the whole bush. For you to mechanize agriculture, I said it is a dream that has to be instilled in the next generation. Imagine 
those who are cultivating. We're still living on peace and agriculture. How many people are exporting maize? I mean maize, which is part of the economy. Cassava. The moment alternatives on cassava has come, we are suffering to eat fufu. We cannot swallow uh, uh, gari or even water fufu again. Myondo or bobolo has changed the price because we're not ready for it. Can we take this nation? The research institutes, where are their results? Where do they even experiment? They experiment on 50 square meters and the one does 50 square meters to feed a nation. When we talk of the Institute for Research and Agronomy, they are supposed to have export grounds which are taken charge by the state. I mean, the whole ex-state. Centers like Pamol, CDC, and other uh, production units were supposed to serve as treatment or testing ground for what such research centers are produced. Where are the candidates? To what extent have they been treated well? Some who are now out, you need to see them how they live. The report on BBC and the rest turned that Cameroon had become one of the most useless economy in terms of content. They are unable to use intellectuals they have trained. A lot, those who are trained in the agricultural domain, are now managing in local farms. Okay. Is that the objective? That the type of agriculture that would take Cameroon we to want, emerge? We want, we want to emerge uh, by 2035. Um, Cameroonians in the diaspora, most of them graduates of prestigious uh, schools and who excel in their fields of activity are invited to use their expertise to develop Cameroon. Economic emergence also requires opening up uh, to partners and foreign investors willing to support our development. How ready are the, is the diaspora, members of the diaspora, to come in to assist and take Cameroon towards its emergence? Uh, are they, are they, uh, do they see themselves as um, being welcomed here? Do they have a place in this objective to move our nation forward? Mr. Leo, I am not going to speak on this like uh, somebody who is doing references. Okay. I'm going to speak like somebody who has first-hand information with respect to what the diaspora has go through mm -hmm. when they come back with the knowledge of acquired out of the country to invest in this country. I think the laws of this country are supposed to be more flexible on the diaspora than even the citizens of the country. Why do I say so? They have gone out, they have visited more advanced countries, and they must have gathered some knowledge from that environment to bring back into this country. And I think the laws guiding this country was, were supposed to be laws that practically give the diaspora the opportunity to move into this country and express or bring back what they have gathered so far abroad. The fact that Europeans and Americans are able to employ our diasporans in top-notch positions, it means they have rated them to their standard. And such a person in that part of the world should be given preference. I will give you a simple example. The Ghanaian president traveled to America and met a Ghanaian who had opened a school in America and the school was of <laughs> top standard. He said, you cannot sit here in America and pour in this knowledge. We are employing you back into Ghana as a minister of education. He said, come back. The man had the offer immediately, left his business there because he had trained somebody, come back to bring the knowledge to upgrade the standard of education back in Ghana. That is what we'll talk about, giving the diaspora the opportunity to come back home with the skill and the talent they have, they have gathered. But that is not the case here. A friend of mine left Australia to set up a huge solar energy company in the country. The procedures to set up that structure were totally frustrated. The quagmire in the administrative sector in the country gives people no zero when they come to invest in this country, both their skill and their finances. And I think the laws that is the law guiding this land that does not give dual nationality to Cameroonians who are out of the country is a very bad law because most countries in the world give dual nationality to their children who have gone out. The secret of Rwanda is that Paul Kagame has taken young men who have studied out of Rwanda to bring back their skill and develop Uganda and Rwanda. Why is it different with our country, Cameroon? You go to abroad, you see Cameroonians there creating impact in agriculture, in technology, in science. It will shock you that in the aviation sector in America, it was a Cameroonian that solved the mathematics that brought out a particular solution when we were to go for an airspace. That, that knowledge is bought there. You will say, okay, they are paying the huge sums of money. They are still petros in this country. I'm going to be speaking in a conference any day from now, Gomar, and one of the things I'm going to be speaking about is patriotism. Because the love for nation is the reason why you are not going to ask an amount of money you know your country cannot pay when you have the skill to offer them. What is the essence of life? It's duplicating yourself in others so that to 
tomorrow when you die your talent remains alive and this is the area that has punctured the Cameroonian system because we do not give opportunity to come back to this country go to other african countries a cameroonian came here to invest in agriculture the procedures put in place for the guy the guy went down to who to where botswana botswana is a middle income economy because they are flexible tanzania middle income economy because they are flexible that's countries in the east africa are rising because they understand the protocol of well, someone who has gone out and come this dual nationality we think is in africa in the most because if you go to places like Asia, you go to places like uh, uh, Middle East, this dual nationality mentality is no longer there. You will discover that Japanese who go out of the country, they come back to invest in their country. They are not seeing Japanese who has traveled abroad as a stranger, whether your passport or no passport. It's like somebody who said that your, 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 your driver's license has expired. <laughs> has the driving expired? Why don't they say your degree has expired? Why don't you say master degree has expired? I will learn driving, drive for 10 years, and the driver's license expired. You stop me on the way and say you're not going to move because your driver's license did the skill expire. And these are the kind of laws we put in the society that choke people and frustrate them. So I think if at all we give an opportunity for the diaspora to come back to this country, both the income they have acquired so far and the skill they have gathered will help expedite development in our country. Mm. But the protocols put on ground suffocate and cause those guys to get frustrated. So I think the diaspora, they are not happy. Okay. My experience with them. Now, um, good evening in the studio and the procedure of Vision 2035 is the increase of prices of basic commodities. Uh, the death of Martinez Zogo is planned to divert our attention from talking about price increase. I'm Awa, writing from Limbe. Good evening to you. Good evening, Mr. Liu, an analyst, uh, um, a literate uh, singer, Dr. Ako John. Ako, the truth is that uh, Cameroon government system is uh, not uh, serious. We need to update. Let these uh, leaders of uh, the old version allow the country for the recent youth with new vision. Uh, from Boya, the Cameroon vision is the same trap of 1992. This is to keep us uh, patriotic citizens uh, busy, busy not focusing on the matters of today than uh, mm -hmm. that of 2035, which we are doing now. Our youth are asked to take over agricultural sectors without any agro-industrial schemes. All these are just dreams which can't be realized by our old fathers in power. Only a youthful mind can change a consuming economy like ours uh, to a productive one like uh, our neighbors. Thanks. Jeffrey is writing from Boya. Hi, Mr. Leo. This is Kadiri from Cyprus. 2035 of an emerging nation is not different from a fake prophecy uh, that never comes to pass. Uh, those who want uh, President Bia to contest for another term of office are not doing so for his good and for the good of Cameroonians. But they want uh, to take advantage of his age or uh, to damage uh, his already failed vision. Journalists uh, who are supposed to be of good help to President Bia and his vision are being killed. If we want to solve the problem of this beautiful nation, we have to keep aside those ideas that were used in creating uh, the problems. My regards to Dr. Ako and Apostle Lambi and all the viewers of this Prime uh, on my Media Prime TV. Thank you very much. Apostle Lambi, no, no, no. Dr. Ako, John Ako, uh, to be able to train and get those who are supposed to run a middle income economy of by 2035, we need to put so much emphasis on education because it is the human resource that is going to uh, be able to realize uh, this uh, vision. You are a lecturer in some universities in Cameroon. What is the appreciation you have of uh, the products that are now being uh, churned out of our universities? And the government also has liberalized uh, this sector. We have so many uh, professional institutions. Is that enough? I believe <clears throat> one of the Millennium Development Goals was getting access to education. Mm -hmm. And so Cameroon, uh, equally a member of the United Nations, picked up that particular goal. Access to education means that every child should have the possibility of going to school when and wherever he or, he or she deems fit. Secondly, we need to ask whether the country was prepared for a liberalized private system of education. Mm -hmm. A liberalized private system of education means that we have comfortable environment to study and that those who are called upon as tutors or teachers have been trained and have equally the human resource capable. Somewhere, you will imagine that government created training centers 
and they equally launch what they call private private training in those training centers where the government would select his own uh, teachers or tutors the uh, private sector was equally going to fetch out from that same private side of these training schools what we ask now especially with um, the secondary or primary education is whether the various state actors and departments are evaluating the process of training the loan process that the government evaluates and i'm evaluating it very well is whether you own documents to run open and run such a school is this the quality standard of training the future generation whether the teachers have been treated well is not a government concern whether the students or the pupils have a comfortable environment to study is not even somebody's concern when you pass around Dwala, you find some people i used to talk of uh, some containers that act as schools, as training environments. Others, no lighting system. Others, no water. Others, no toilet. Some, the every nature. It's not, they're living in a stuffy environment. But you see this private would be equally saying that some schools created by the government himself, the students have no campuses, nor have even benches, and that some are studying under trees. This means that somewhere, the responsibility of training or giving quality education will depend on the extent to which government can provide those access. We, in the private education, uh, higher education, you uh, uh, not uh, without uh, eating words, there have been a white paper, a new program for all universities. The private education today, the level we have in Cameroon, is not what was in the past. Today, the Ministry of Higher Education has given what we call tutorship, guardianship, that before you run a private university, you should have a mentored, uh, uh, partnership with a government institution that runs the same program like you do. To what extent are those private universities apply the modalities of the state is what makes a distinction between one institution and another. It's, and this is where the role of government comes in. The such visits when they are said to be pedagogy meaning at times when you have pedagogic uh, uh, inspectors coming right up to the school to even see in a normal classroom what is going on. But somewhere again, we even notice that such days, even the teacher to whom the pedagogic invest, uh, inspector is going to visit has been informed already. So it might be a Nigerian movie or African Nollywood movie that okay. has been programmed already. That the questions that are going to be asked are questions which students are already aware. And that every student sitting in that particular class has a particular haircut because they want to see that the students are equally up to date in terms of their dressing. It is that day that the discipline master and the student have a general agreement that they will be very early in school and nobody will be found outside strolling while the inspector is around. And what happened when the inspector is not there? So a lot of lapses. Uh, the problem faced by private or higher education or private or secondary or whatever primary education in Cameroon are the same problem plaguing the general Cameroonian people, which means that lack of control, lack of mentorship, lack of monitoring, and maybe devotion. A lot of people who are called today to many schools were not devoted. School, I said sometime to many other colleagues teaching is a vocation it is not a profession if you want to make a lot of money out of teaching then you are wasting your time you have missed where that is done today we have a lot who came to school because there was no other alternative they came to school as teachers as the last resort so in them somebody did physics and is recruited under higher ens in literature what do you intend that when he comes out what is he going to teach because that very year, his own domain was not launched. There are a lot of problems we go around, but somewhere it become political. One of the finest which the government, um, higher education did, was introducing business studies in higher education. And we know that there is no country that has emerged without a business mindset. And today, entrepreneurship and business creation becomes a domain, a specialty for training. This is done now at the university level. What becomes those who will not be capable of having assets to the university. Yes, at the level of secondary education, few courses are taught on computer development, marketing, and the rest. Can we create a business? You find it in countries like Nigeria, Ghana, South Africa, that business occupy the mind of such youths. For Cameroon to change, if Cameroon needs to be self-reliance, there is a need for entrepreneurship to mean one of the main courses that we're talking of agriculture. Give them the base and let them know that there are prospects in business and that teaching or getting to work with the government is not the way out. That is the message of the head of state just the, on the 31st, on the, on the 10th.
calling the youths to be self-reliant. You cannot be self-reliant when you don't have the required skill. And that which means we move from theory based to practice. Students should avoid the study of history or you study anthropology. Mm -hmm. When you study anthropology or psychology, where do you work? How can you be self-reliant? How many people will consult a psychologist in Cameroon? <laughs> the economy is still a traditional local economy. Yes, in Europe, somebody has a problem with the wife. He's not on that side. He goes alone and consults a psychologist and to find out what he He pays. The few minutes he has consulted the psychologist, he pays. That's so many students now do literature, Good. Uh, history. Others even go to religion. Mm -hmm. When they have no purpose of becoming priest mm. or evangelist. Mm. So just imagine, meaning they are, the future thousands, has been... Thousands, thousands... A lot! Thousands are, are, are studying what our country actually may not need. No need it. Mm -hmm. The environment, the business world. Mm -hmm. So we need to orientate, and this orientation should not start from the university. Mm -hmm. Yes, somewhere where there was a plan of guided counselors. Mm -hmm. The guided counselors were recruited. But today I'm telling you that if you get to schools, you realize that not up to 60% of what we train as guided counselors are today guided counselors in their schools. Okay. A lot have changed straight because that was just a stepping stone into other environments or ecosystems. Uh, good evening, Mr. Luel. Of the topic of today uh, is Saka uh, writing from Limbe. My regards to Dr. Aku John Aku and Apostle Lambe Valentine Gua. Love the program. Um, a topic like this, please uh, do well. Uh, okay. You would have brought in some other persons also to add to them. Okay. Um, we've got to you. We hope that uh, good evening, Mr. Liu, and to all the panel panelists. Um, it's a wonderful program. Mr. Liu, your topics are always so searching. Thank you for making my evening. Sir, this is writing from Akumba. Uh, good evening, everyone at the studio at Prime R, uh, watching you uh, live from Bonaberry in Douala. Good evening, Mr. Liu, and the great minds. It is aching that Cameroon will emerge. Before I was born and perhaps around the early 90s, Cameroon fed China, but now China is feeding Cameroon. I'm still wondering when our leaders travel to some African countries like Ghana, Tanzania, uh, Rwanda, just to name a few. I wonder what they learned from these countries. Mr. Liu, there will be much of brain drain in Cameroon, like in many fields, uh, most science and science uh, teachers keep leaving Cameroon. If Cameroon needs uh, to emerge, then let's invest in our own. Nelson Gomez writing from Sang Melima. Yes, uh, this issue of brain drain, almost everybody wants to travel out of the country. So who is going to work for Cameroon to emerge? How do we keep who, those we train in Cameroon and also even invite those who are out of the country to come into Cameroon? If you see uh, Dubai today, uh, they are they are actually excelling not because the the, the citizens of the uh, United Arab Emirates are the ones working. That is, they ha they uh, they are attracting a pool of human resources from across the, the world to want to come there. Qatar and other countries. How do we also ensure that we get the best from across the globe to come and develop this nation? Uh, Mr. Lula, let me begin by saying that I, I was a speaker in a meeting with the Minister of Youth and Civic Education, the Minister of Vocational Training and Employment, and the Minister of Small Business Enterprise were all members of that meeting. And I addressed the issue of patriotism. We have taught civics in our country, taught about citizenship. We have not taught about patriotism. Most countries in the world do not have supermen. They just have people who have been trained to understand that their country is superior to every other country in the world. If you go online and you write anything against Isaiah Afweki from Eritrea, you will see how many Eritreans will rise up to attack you. They are not attacking because Afweki is perfect. They are attacking because they have been trained to understand that Eritrea is the best country they could ever find peace in the world. Eritrea is the only country they could ever develop. Eritrea is the only country they could ever defend in their life. That's what called patriotism. It is a shameful thing that in our country, from kindergarten to university level, there is no subject on patriotism. So children don't understand love for nation. They don't understand the sacrifice for a nation. They don't understand the well-being and the wealth of a nation. And because of that, a lot of people look at this nation as a place where they are looking for what to get instead of what to offer. 
true patriotism, you live in a country for what you have to offer, not what you have to get. So, so when they stay around and they can't get what they're supposed to get, they move to nations that can give them what they're supposed to get. But actually, those nations they are moving into, some people were patriots in that country who choose to stay there in hunger, in difficulties, in starvation, in war, to build that country to where it is today. If not patriotism, what will cause a European to fly or enter ship to Africa? Come here, be individuals, buy them as slaves, to go and walk in plantations to develop Europe and America. That's patriotism. It was love for their nation that caused them to hazard, to go through hazardous situations, risking their lives, being killed by mosquitoes, somewhere killed by hostile communities, just to trap slaves to go back and develop their country. The Europe you are seeing today, which is enjoyed by many, was not built by those who are enjoying it. Those who built Europe were patriots who wanted their country, their community to develop for the future. Now we have not taught our generation what is patriotism. And that's the reason why everyone that grows up in the country have a mentality to receive rather than to give out. They have a mentality to collect than to impact. They have a, a consciousness to receive from the nation, not the one to build the nation. And that's the reason why everyone that has a talent and a skill that can be paid for outside quickly run away from their country. I don't think if we are true patriots in this country, we will want to take a skill that will benefit Cameroon and go and invest in America because the salary is high. A patriot is someone who is interested in the well-being of the nation. That the nation can only be free if the brave are in the land. The nation can only experience freedom if the brave remain in the land. So the problem we have today in our society is that we Africans have not taught true patriotism. The people like Kwame Nkrumah, Julius Malimu Nyerere, and the rest traveled and studied in America. Some studied in Portugal. Some studied in different places. Uh, 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 America Cabra studied in Portugal. Kuma studied in America. And the rest studied outside there. They had the opportunity with the skill and the talent they have to stay out there and be given huge amount of money and forget about their continent. But out of patriotism, they came back to their continent, risked their lives, engaged into processes, fought for the independence of their people, and gave them the independence they so much desired. That's what called patriotism. But you see, it is difficult for us to understand here in Africa that I can have a skill, even I'm not well paid, I'm working for posterity, not prosperity. I'm working for posterity. I'm investing. So you go to Europe, you see Europeans today are very comfortable. Europe was not built by comfortable people. Europe was built by sacrificial people. America wasn't built by comfortable people. America was built by sacrificial people. So until we change our curriculum in education and start making Africans to understand the value for motherland, the fight for motherland, the desire for motherland, the sacrifice for the wealth of the nation, I think we are not going to have competent people out of this continent it will shock you that america europe and the most developed countries in the world are using the africans for their development i'm telling you mm -hmm. go to the industrial sector the scientific sector the infrastructural sector in most of those countries africans are the leading machineries behind all those growth why because they are giving huge amount of money that is because the africans are pursuing the salary not pursuing the destiny of their nation because to me, if I know how to create electricity, I will come back to Cameroon and do the electricity on a meager salary because I'm living a posterity. I'm not working for prosperity. Okay. Uh, good evening, Mr. Liu. The, program in, the problem in our country today is that uh, they are not always keeping their promises. Uh, for example, the ring road construction from Bermenda and back uh, to Bermenda has not been done. The, the, again, the government is not also promoting. Uh, that's why... Most of our youths are mostly going out of the country after serious study back at how, okay? If they were able to invest in their country, it will help the country to see uh, its vision by 2035. Tafa is writing from Bamenda. Good evening to you, uh, Tafa. Let me take just some few messages. Sir. Hi, I'm called She Gaston writing from Yaoundé to Archive. No, to achieve to achieve uh, the vision 2035 in this nation, the old leader uh, should hand power to the youths uh, so that they can change uh, things. Okay, hi, good evening to you all in the studio. Um, Gabo Marquis uh, writing in Limbe, what every Cameroonian should be conscious of as concerns 2035 
emergency is that of television and not a vision. Mr. Liu, please read my post. I've done that. A very interesting topic. How do you think uh, a student that did arts in school pass ENS this year in the physics department to teach well? Okay. As time goes on, we will not have teachers that can teach well in this country except the PTA teacher. Okay, Mr. Leo, good evening. At times, uh, some subjects are not done because of their prospective use, for example, philosophy. Good evening, Mr. Leo. My regards to Apostle Ambe. Uh, your programs always make my day because, okay, this one says, because they are failed before time, so shame is their portion. Greetings, Mr. Liu. Uh, like the speaker in Red Hat, he has the same knowledge as me. I wish to have his number. Are you junior? Writing from Limbe. Good evening, Mr. Liu and Co. Talking about emergence 2035, in my opinion, does not exist. The president in intentionally set that date in on purpose. Okay. Uh, thank you uh, very much. I want us to look at uh, this um, Cameroon becoming an industrialized uh, country. What do you think we would need to to attain uh, this? Are we on course with the construction of these dams that are going to be able to uh, power the sector? <clears throat> when you talk of industrialization, we need to look at the resource-based approach. A resource-based approach mm -hmm. is, are Cameroonians ready to receive such industrialization? A gigantic economy like that of Nigeria, which several times we have said we are blessed mm -hmm. to have the most populous African nation as a neighbor, which means that we were supposed to be somewhere at the foot of Nigerian development. Mm -hmm. Everything we do, Nigeria is supposed to consume. Just take the sector like the tomato sector. Whenever Nigerians decide to consume tomato from Cameroon, the producers and uh, farmers enjoy absolute profit, which means we can do other things. But it is shocking for us to learn that we instead consume more from Nigeria, mm -hmm. that the more populous nation is it's feeding us, okay. a small nation like Cameroon. The name Mikom Yam became a Nigerian-based product, and that even rubber shoes, slippers, and many other wares, which we find in our major markets in Cameroon, are coming from Nigeria. Are Cameroonians ready to receive such a giant structure, a, a giant initiative? We will say vehemently no. When you talk of the construction of the dams, ask very well. The technocrats and the contractors behind those dams are they first of all Cameroonians. It means that the country is lagging from the onset. And secondly, you realize that the projects we have taken, which of the dams now give us light, as the lighting situation change from the epileptic nature that we have noticed all this while. When privatization came in the years 1990, after the 1992 uh, economic meltdown, the intention was that things will be produced cheap and Cameroonians will pay cheap. Are we paying those things now cheap? The really, you realize that it was a political agenda. For Cameroon to industrialize, what we have said here, we need to know the domain that can make life today. Somewhere I listened, and what we have said, the fastest growing economies now are not economies based on traditional or handcraft. Mm -hmm. These are economy based on IT. How many IT schools do we have? where specialists are being trained. I mean specialists of international standard that you can command electricity like we have seen the system in Sonara for those who have had the possibility of being there. That we have the whole IT room that controls water, temperature, physics or chemistry going into the pipes to wheresoever it goes. A simple button can stop and obstruct everything. Have we trained such level? We are not talking of secretary ship and printing of documents. Mm -hmm. We are talking of IT of industrial level that we can set computers here, relate with the computers of the organization based in South Africa, and details come to us. Whether by water or by air or by land, we are capable of having data at any time. Imagine engagement like the optical fiber, which the state has invested a lot of money. We're intending that when such technology arrives, we can be the bedrock for the whole sub-region, meaning Cameroonians were to manage. Are we capable of even managing the network in our own country first? There is a lot to go. Education which I said should be the bedrock of every development. When the Chinese talk of emergent by 2000, I want to tell you for those who are not aware that a lot of Chinese students were sent abroad based on government sponsorship. And these people that were sent abroad were not coming back to beg jobs for recruitment. When they come back home, there were jobs. 
Mm. As go abroad, they study. When you come back home, you are in problem with those who are on seat. They already have in their brain that you have come to take their jobs. That link with what you asked Apostle Abe about the diaspora. A lot of people who have gone abroad, had gone abroad for studies, are unable to come back. Because the hostile nature of politics at home does not contain them again. And for the few period, they used to tell us that education was the instrument that the West used to overpower us. But then today, we need to have education which is based on development. Development of our own. You cannot be studying in Cameroon and you are writing about how to manufacture an aeroplane when Cameroon does not even have one industry where such things can be based. We need to talk of the production of cocoa yams. We need to talk of how we can grow cassava. Yes, some people said we are not prepared. When you look at the farming of cocoa and coffee and you look at the farming of rubber and banana, to whom was this, were this product profiting? This product were profiting the foreign companies. And meaning they came to Africa to look for their raw materials mm -hmm. and created their plantations. And we are now feeding them. And it is the raw material we are depending to grow our own economy. That is why when the cocoa goes out, when it comes back, we pay more than 10000 the price they took from us. And people are arguing. We need to develop what we need. If we need to industrialize, we need to be developing what the population needs. That is what they call in the U.S. R&D, research and development. If education cannot develop the immediate environment in which you are, then it does not serve any purpose. Until we learn to be developed internally, we cannot fit other foreign nations. At times, we become assessed to those who are abroad because they have seen that what we had, we have developed them. I want to tell you from what they call the Nigerian movie industry. Mm -hmm. Today, Nigerians decided to act movies in the Nigerian manner, not singing songs like Aro Kelly. They take their local song and be in ultra-modern instrument and they produce the local music. And we are now dressing. You want to dress like Nigerian, you want to dress like those in the West. Nobody wish again to wear a suit and attend official ceremony. Right to the president of that nation. I have not seen where Buari or Jonathan are on suit because they believe there is a need to develop and consume the local products. But when we consume more abroad, people are more happy if a shed was coming from California or Switzerland or Geneva or that the chocolate from Geneva is better than the chocolate made in Douala. So we feel more comfortable when such names are used. For industrialization to come, we are not in developing foreign products. There is a need to home-based development. We develop and transform. I would not like, maybe not of more publicity, but you know a lot of industries today that are transforming local products into industrial products, which means we can now eat water food without really using no, we a should, mortar, we should, and the rest. Yes, people like uh, afro Yes, yeah, that's what I'm saying, yes. that maybe... Some people may be feeling that it is part of publicity. That now honey that is being made, that was made locally, honey now is bottled and placed on shelves in supermarkets. You did not go back to Bafang or Chang or maybe Market to get honey. You can get it right in your kitchen. Others, a lot of it. Cassava. We people thought that cassava was just of fufu and bobolo. Now cassava too can be used for making of uh, bread and even puff puff, which means a lot is improving and that is the basic knowledge we need. Now it becomes a problem. When cassava is being transformed to other products, are the farmers aware that the demand for cassava is going to increase? Because the same cassava was used for feeding other animals and human beings. Today it's being transformed to other dairy products. Yeah. Can we withstand the demand that will come? Like I just said with red oil. Red oil, what are the needs? People just thought that red oil was for eating or cooking. Today, red oil is an industrial product. Mm -hmm. People use it for other purposes. Some vegetable oil, we call vegetable oils, are derivatives from red oil. The and nobody product, yeah. is aware. Okay. And that is how it goes on. Are the industry prepared? We need to train physicians and engineers somewhere. The American brought what we call a vacuum. That when they produce a cone of nuts, can give you five liters of palm oil. Can we have such technology in Cameroon okay. so that such products don't end only with a vacuum? Is the industry aware that consumption of fish, Cameroonians are not even aware where the fish they consume in the market is coming from. We need to tilt and drill the next generation into this. It is not by okay. 2035. Who are expecting that if a merger was to come in 2035, 11 or 10, 15 years time, we're supposed to evaluate ourselves, are we going to emerge? Okay. If we are not emerging, then it is still free. The head of state to tell us that a merger will come back in 2050. And so we take other years and prepare the better or the platform under which the youths can work on other 
agendas. Okay. Uh, good evening, Mr. Liu. This is Joy Aku. I'm watching live from Bomenda. My greetings to uh, Professor Aku, John Aku, and Dr. <laughs> yeah, just give it titles. <laughs> they call you Dr. Apostle. <laughs> Very interesting topic, I must say, as I agree, business and agricultural courses uh, be introduced at a higher educational level. Good evening in studio. Apostle has made me today to understand uh, that uh, the scammers we have in the country are the most patriotic we have. Okay. <laughs> Luis is writing <laughs> from Nimba. Okay. Good evening, Mr. Leo. This is Agbo Sparks from uh, Boya. We have all it takes uh, to be rich in our economy, but we are selfish with ourselves uh, not to promote others. God has blessed us, everyone, with the works of uh, their hands, but we don't promote those who know more than others. Okay? Good evening, Mr. Leo. Egbe Augustine writing from Mamfi, Cameroon becoming emerging nation. By 2020, 2035 will be very difficult task uh, due to high taxes in the economy of Cameroon. Good evening, Mr. Leo. How can uh, how can we expect okay us to have skills without being employed? I need to go out where the skills are needed and I will be employed in order to better my life by God will. Writing from Bafusa. Um Apostle Ambi, when this is a strategic paper that was put in place by the government of Cameroon, ministers have been uh, appointed at different ministerial positions. Is it that they have forgotten that they are supposed to be working towards this, or the fact that they are not being reminded of this? No, Mr. Lewis, it's not because the ministers have forgotten they are supposed to be doing this. The issue is... Or maybe they are overwhelmed by so many problems that the country is faced with now. Overwhelmed with what? They are not overwhelmed in stealing state budget. They are overwhelmed in, in, in carrying out what they have casted as a vision before them. The problem is not, is not the absence of people to work. The problem is that there is no goodwill. Most people are good at explaining things and very few are very good at executing things. The problem we have with Camarillo, Camaro have very good orators that can speak about things. But we don't have people who are practical in carrying steps that will make things materialize. That is where the challenge is. If you realize Cameroon has been a country that talks a lot. Every year they will come up with very huge projects. They will sensitize the public. Yet as the years are dying by, dying down, you will definitely realize that none of those projects were accomplished. This is the reason why we keep saying that leadership is a very fundamental requirement in the fulfillment of dreams and vision. Mm -hmm. If there is no effective leadership in place, there is no guarantee that a vision can be accomplished because leaders are the ones who drive visions to fruition. But if there is no leadership in place to drive any vision to fruition, it tells you that that vision can never be accomplished. We can say so many things as we wish, but if they are not meant to make it happen, then definitely it will remain a mere wish. And they say if wishes were horses, even beggars would ride. If Cameroon was to prosper through wishes, would have been a first world nation. But we are good at making wishes that we never and ever execute them. And I think the ministers who have been appointed and given the responsibility, they go to the parliament every year to defend budgets, budgets under their ministry. Now look at what was pointed out there. It's not practically directed to individual ministries. It is just a vision put together to make the dream of the nation a reality. I think they are supposed to look for experts who have the capacity in every respective areas to drive this vision into manifestation. Mm -hmm. We don't have the, the ability to select the best brains in the society. If we want increase in income, we want increase in agriculture, let's use the minds that have it. Mm -hmm. Because Kamaru is a place where somebody can be Minister of Agriculture when he studies accounting. Somebody can be Minister of Trade when he is somebody that studied agriculture, which is absolutely out of text. The problem is we are putting square pegs in round holes and round pegs in square holes. So I think if a vision like this is set before us, the individuals who are experts in those respective domains are supposed to be called upon and given distribution for all these particular things to be accomplished. Because if the individuals in question who are experts in this field are not called, we can only go on making noise year after year and nothing is accomplished. How do you explain that somebody who never read geology is a minister of mines? Somebody who never read agriculture is a minister of agriculture. Somebody is a minister of defense today, the next is a minister of justice. 
Remember the Secretary General of the Presidency today, the next President Minister of 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 of, of, uh, um, of sports. So you realize that we are just putting individuals that we know, not individuals that have the competence and the ability to drive vision into manifestation. I think it is possible to cast a very big vision, but you are not having the ability to execute all those things because everyone has a role to play. Let us look for experts to make things for free. Okay. I have a teaching to carry out a few days from now. And I said that when we talk about exporting things out of a country, we talk about bauxite, manganese, gold, diamond, oil. It is time we start exporting talent. The amount of money Nigerians make through music that they send outside. Whiskey goes outside and brings millions. Mm. The video goes out and brings millions. They are no longer exporting materials out of the country. They are exporting talent and skills out of the country. The amount of money we import here, experts to come and carry things in this country, sometimes higher than the amount of money we buy products that are processed in Europe. I can tell you that you can buy chocolate that was present in Europe for 1000 But if you bring an engineer with an electrical engineer for France to work here, they will pay him $200 million in one week. The amount of money that we buy ex imported products cannot be compared to the amount of money we pay imported experts. So it's high time we don't only focus on developing what we have here as natural resources. We have to start developing human resources. Which could Europeans be and Americans will buy any brain that they don't have. That's the reason why they could pay so high for it to fees. They could pay high for Nganu. That's exporting of talents. And every income paid to it to fees and to Nganu falls back to this country because the income comes here. So if at all we cannot send processed products to Europe, let us send great brains and minds to go there and spoil the economy and bring back here. We have comedians. Nigerians are having comedians that make billions. Mm -hmm. They have footballers. They have musicians. Nigeria now exports even gospel music out of the country. Do you know how much money Nigerian preachers bring into the economy per year? That's human talent. That's human resource. So what are we exporting? We export what goes out lesser and come back with higher account of higher, 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 higher prices. Instead of exporting something that goes out with nothing, exporting two faces DBA to America will cost you nothing. But you will come back with $30 million. Exporting Davido to Maryland is going to cost you nothing. But you will come back with millions of dollars. Davido went to India and a country, a, a, a royal family gave him 40 million um, um, whiskey. They gave him 40 million and he brought back to Nigeria. That's a talent that has been exported out of the country and is bringing income back into the country. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Good evening, Mr. Liu Apostle Lambe and uh, Prof. Ako. Um, Dennis uh, watching from the United Arab Emirates. Uh, what I must say, Mr. Liu, is that if the government of Cameroon can reduce uh, the rate of which uh, the tax Cameroonians who wish to invest in the country upon the knowledge acquired out of the country can do our country uh, more good. Again, most Cameroonians abroad do have for more skills uh, to invest and develop the country, but chances are too low because of high taxes uh, demanding from them. Good evening, Mr. Liu, your panelists. Uh, I think the problem with Cameroon is mutual distrust uh, from our political leaders and the youth. The leaders don't trust uh, the youth. Uh, they have trained in schools in various domains. We have engineers, yet the government brings engineers from China and other countries, and the money that would have circulated within the economy is paid to foreigners. The youth on the part are brain draining into other countries because they don't trust the system. It doesn't provide conducive conditions for growth of uh, young people. Solomon is writing from Boya. Greetings to the panel. Most people are running to invest for our country is not welcoming. Either it's by taxes or you are to invest where they want or you quit. Kunyi is writing from Yaoundé. Good evening, Mr. Leo Roosevelt um, B. from Manfi. I wish to say the government talking about Vision 2035 is just a slogan to tell the world we too can speak English. Greetings to uh, Dr. Ako and I thank my alma mater for such a wonderful breed like Dr. Ako. He's a force to reckon with, okay? Since I start following your program, I have learned many things about history, income in Cameroon, okay? Good evening, sir. I think the reason why nothing is said about Cameroon's vision 2035 today is because of the absence of good leaders. When a leader or leaders of any system has a problem, the entire vision will have a problem as well. I think wicked and crafty leaders is their problem. 
Vision 2035 is a vision, but you need drivers who are competent to move it and to make this vision of course. Uh, find fruition. Is that where we also are lacking? This is beautifully crafted. The document is there. Voluminous document, I have it. Now, we need competent <coughs> persons. It's, are we having a problem with casting with uh, those who can carry the vision? Cameroon does not lack competent persons. Yes, but, but there are persons who are charged to do this. Yes, that is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And when you look at the profile of a lot of them, some left great successful international organizations and companies to come back to Cameroon. We have people that have been at IMF. We have people that have been in NASA. We have others at Sorbonne. We have fellows from Harvard. We have some from Cambridge. The same other candidates and classmates are excelling and doing well for their nation. There is a general Cameroonian malaise. There is that mindset that Cameroonians have when they come back home, that nobody is worth celebrating and that there is no need to be celebrated. You cannot change Cameroon and that you met Cameroon. You cannot change the world. We have received such words from people we are thinking that we're supposed to be learning from them, telling you that you cannot change Cameroon. You simply met it and you will leave it. So which means there is a general political agenda that everybody has learned that for you to live well and stay well, simply sing the Hosanna, be a chorister, be a praise singer, that the system is doing well, even when it is not doing so. We have been here several times. That people are aware that in 1990, a cup of gari was 10 francs, and that 11 cups of gari were given for 100. And that now that Cameroonians have been to school, and Cameroonians are matured today, with a lot of school and studies, knowledge, others have opened companies. What has happened to cassava? That now a cup of gari is instead sold for 100. I ask the same question. Those who supported the system and what they are living in will tell you that population has increased today. And so I said China should be dying of starvation because it has moved maybe from 700 to 1.3 billion people. When education is added, technology added, and the brains that are called to execute the mission of the state execute it appropriately, the people benefit. The profit come back to that nation and everybody will heal that country. The youth will not be dying at the Mediterranean. There is that character of retaining, retaining your own citizens because they admire what is going back home. But when you know that the nation and those who take decision is reserved for a few and that not everybody can participate in decision making. Some people become hopeless and so they look for other grounds, other avenues. We have seen a lot of Cameroonians somewhere coming back but not rejecting the story that you gave of the diaspora. Why are they not coming here? A lot of people are angry that they don't even, they are not even noticed, they don't even exist. I said something here sometime, people are thinking it is a joke. Donald Trump signed personal letters to each citizen during COVID and gave a budget for those who were under stress by COVID, at least $1,200 to the signature of the president carrying your name. And Mr. Leonard, whom the government of the United States offers you this to take it as a break, stay back home. Let's control this pandemic. People feel, and you always have you such a letter with the signature of the head of state make you concerned. We have not seen such actions here. We have not seen actions where Cameroonians have even been called up to be celebrated at the presidency for what they did. You admire what Emmanuel Macron did to that Malian who survived a small girl. On top of the building, calling him at the state house is the greatest respect you should give a national hero for what he has done to that nation. The respect Cameroonians intend to give. But what happens here? We applaud for those who steal budget and maintain power. Like I wrote one day, the moment senatorial elections were announced, senators started gathering rice and bags of sugars to villages. Things we have not seen for the past five years. Mm. Is that the type of politics that will take Cameroon to emergence? We need to look at that a political base must be a give and take. Politics is for development. If you can't develop the people, there's no need going to fool them with bag of rice. And what has happened? You find a quarrel after the lists were given by political parties. Some people with said lists in some regions have simply been maintained, meaning they have been doing their work well. When the party himself cannot evaluate those who are to take us to 2035, who are we? 
A lot of us are not politicians. And this is a lot that has dragged Cameroonians to more. People who are there as leaders, those who are implementing decisions, what are they interested in? Inflating the budget, collecting the budget, and managing their lifestyle. That the life of an individual is better than the life of a nation. We are taught, like Apostle Tambe said here, patriotism is that we settle as individuals for a common good. It is that common good that the head of state was elected in a common mandate in elections that he will take us to the destination we want. But when a few hold the destiny of a whole nation to their hands for 40 years, we are not proud of Cameroon. We are proud of Ghana. Cameroonians start telling you that I would better go to South Africa. I would better go to Dubai because Dubai has used 25 years to become the point of attraction of the whole world. I said we can make it in Cameroon. We can make it happen in six years. If Tanzanians could do it, why can't Cameroonians do it? The Ghanaians left from a civil war and became a great nation. The South Africans left apartheid and they are now being clamored and adored. Can't we do it? There are nations that have done so. Kagame, the genocide, did not reduce his vision. We need leaders with vision. We need leaders with aimed decision, independent of the institution. And that a single person is not stronger than the state. But when we accuse people, and the people are simply promoted or awarded to new ranks, and even given more decoration to what 2035 we need. Cameroonians have everything. There are a lot of Cameroonians abroad. I told my students that I believe there is no nation in the world where there is no Cameroonian. Like he said, brain drain. When they give you a visa to go abroad, get to the process of recruiting people to travel. They are not sending you as a burden to the taxpayer. Before you are going to the U.S. or Canada or the Britain, they know already that you are a resource to that nation. And that whatsoever you are going to do there will add a value. If Cameroonians can develop themselves internally, we need to get nations to admire what we are doing. Okay. We need a heart and more visionary leader that decisions are fixed to the point. The moment you are recruited or appointed as a minister, you have what they call a plan of action. Mm -hmm. We evaluate you by that. Yeah, but, but, but uh, now that is what they call the roadmap now. Yes, that's what I call plan of action. For you, that you have, and then you are giving I'm, you. I've asked this question, but that roadmap is there. Why are we not implementing it? Who is, is following it? It is a protocol paper that has nothing to mean, but just for the ceremony. The prime minister sign you sign. They give you, he gives you. <laughs> Who even evaluate where you have attained, okay. what you have attained, and what is left to be attained? A okay. new minister come up, he changed his own plan. That's why projects have been abandoned. Because that budget was used already. Good evening, Mr. Leo. You always discuss uh, very sensitive and interesting topics about Vision 2035. Are you aware how it was conceived and drafted? We wanted to transform our economy from primary to secondary economy, but there was no objective to develop leadership and management. How were we going to manage the new economy? Are you aware the acad academia was never consulted and were never involved? To me, Vision 2035 was a political sl slogan That's without saying, yeah. clear strategies. Uh, thank you. Nkwa Jacob is writing from Kumbu. Good evening, sir. Thanks for the program cut down on the ministries in order to emerge. P period. Atta is writing from Belo. Thanks. Uh, good evening, Mr. Leo. I'm Romeo, watching live from Malabo. Your programs are always uh, very educative. Thanks uh, very much. Uh, good evening, Mr. Leo. My greetings to all the panelists in the studio. I am so happy for the topics of today. Uh, the problem with Cameroon is the leaders. Uh, the leaders need to give way to Cameroonians who are devoted uh, to grow this economy. Many of the leaders today don't have love for this country but putting their own interests first. And Pastor James, uh, writing from Aboya, Apostle Ambe Valentine Angwa. Uh, good evening, Mr. Liu. The leaders are greedy and self-centered. As such, the country has no future. The rich getting richer. Auntie Lucy is writing from uh, Muya. Uh, good evening, Mr. Liu. When we were given the vision 2035, what exactly was said about it? On what grounds of emergence are we l looking forward uh, to experience this shift? The right questions have not yet been asked. Uh, I'm writing from Betua. Lambert is writing from Betua. Yes, um, many persons are looking at this issue of leadership, 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 political will. We want to go somewhere. But we need good drivers. Of course, Mr. Mm -hmm. Liu. Don't you realize that our ministers, presidents, parliamentarians, and other personalities fly out of this country often. 
can they tell us that they have not seen Cameroonians out of this country in other countries that are very competent and skillful in areas? Why do they come by here with the taxes from France? They don't come by here with the skills that Cameroonians have acquired in other countries. Why don't you go for a hunt and do discoveries in other countries with Cameroonians who have left an indelible mark in particular areas and beckon on this? They come back, bring this skill here. Because if you travel to America, you will see Cameroonians who are doing well. If you go to France, you go to Germany, you go to Switzerland, you go to Australia, there was supposed to be a hunt. It was supposed to be a hunt to go and search the people whom we think have gone out there. They have acquired the skill that is helping Europe and America develop and then bring them back home and say, my brother, this skill you are investing in Europe here, why don't you bring it back to Africa? I don't think if we sit here that you will discover that most of the persons who are occupying office in this country would rather fight any Cameroonian who is competent out of the country from coming here because their position will be threatened. Their position will be threatened. And if somebody is in America, for instance, is doing well in geology, and okay, they say, okay, they want to bring him here, the first person that will stand against the coming of that individual is the Minister in, of Mines and the Secretary General in, of Mines, the Minister of Mines, that will stand and say, no, this person is not coming because they feel like their position should be threatened. We fight human resource in this country because of our egocentric nature, self-centered attitude, because we want to amass wealth for ourselves, not for the well-being of the nation. I think when goals like that are set, visions are casted in front of us, there is a need for us to go hunting. Hunting people whom we think have created impact in that area. Because in Cameroon, you are appointed based on your eloquence. And you are also appointed based on your connection. You are not appointed based on your impact. I think the idea of making visions become a reality should be focused on those who have produced results in that area. Like I keep saying in this country, we have poor who have PhD in different areas and they don't have any result on ground. The issue is the individuals who have left a mark on ground in that area should be important in this country to come and demonstrate their expertise. For instance, if we are talking about agricultural growth, we go to America, we see a Cameroonian that has about 30 hectares of pineapple or 30 hectares of one plant and he is a skillful agronomist. What do we do? My brother, how did you manage to make this happen here in America? Can you come to Cameroon and make this thing happen in Cameroon? We say, okay, we have gotten somebody in the area of agriculture. Because to me, if I had to be the president or university chancellor, before you will become a PhD holder in agronomy, you will not write thesis. You will show us a farm. You will show us a farm that you have engaged your skill there. That will come to that farm. It is the evaluation of that farm that makes you us defend your PhD in agronomy. If you tell us that you are a PhD holder in marketing, you won't write a thesis and give us a bunch of notes. You will show us a successful business established on ground. That proves that you are a marketer. I think the idea of ski, that's what China has developed now. Do you know that China now cultivates cocoa? China cultivates cassava and exports gari? That is a threat we're already having right now. Because the things we used to boast of, oh, the Europeans are coming here for agriculture, they are coming here. I'm saying it, if we don't develop human capacity in this continent, we are going to cry. Because petrol very soon will be replaced by electric vehicles, rechargeable vehicles. They won't buy your fuel anymore if you think they'll be running here always. The crops you think you are cultivating here, the Chinese have come, exploited the environment, transported the seeds back to their place. They now produce cassava and export Chinese gari. They now produce cocoa and they're exporting cocoa to Europe and America. That is to let you understand that the things we used to boast and brag about, we are gradually losing control over. It is high time we start developing the skills that are very, very important for human development. And this is the reason why leadership is very fundamental. Giving people the right place to work based on their ability, skills, and their potential. Some are possible based on connection and their ability to eloquently express themselves. In Cameroon, I used to say that in the English-speaking region, if you want to win a girl, speak good English. In the French region, if you want to win a girl, do a good business. Because the French girl will ask you to fake what? But an English girl, when you tell her I was mesmerized, when I saw you, I was dazed. When she hears such expressions, that's the reason why we could win girls from school in those days with love letters loaded with good grammatic jargons. But not, 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 not the French girl because they are business oriented. And this is the reason why if we don't develop the attitude of developing skillful people to manage certain responsibilities, we are going nowhere. 
a vision like that which is cast i think cameroon was supposed to say okay who is this cameroonian in this foreign country who has acquired advanced knowledge in this domain in industry let us go after him yes because what we are doing is that we can transport a european expert into this country but we cannot transport an african expert in europe into this country that's it there are africans in europe who are good in electrification but you know when something goes wrong with about electricity here eh? we must need a white man from france that will come and stay in a luxurious hotel and they will pay him 200 million per week why there is a cameroonian somewhere in america with that same ski we cannot import must we import only whites as experts in this country when we have the same expert with black skin out of this country do you know that a cameroonian who is based in britain and is an expert in electrification will not be brought here when there's a challenge with, the, with, with, with the electricity rather they will look for a white man from france that will come here the same things we import here as experts we have all those same experts in other countries from africa at least it's important for us to start giving people what they deserve even the bible say give to caesar what is caesar's and give to god what is god people should be given responsibility based on their competence not based on connection not based on who they know not based on their political parties not based on their relationship with the authorities in question okay uh, apostle you cannot inflate a balloon from inside the balloon you must inflate it from outside the balloon food for thoughts okay good evening mr kum dr aku and apostle Lambe. your program is so interesting may i say cameroon's uh, problem stems from lack of effective and efficient leadership because if i'm not mistaken it is over four years today the president of the republic had never held a cabinet meeting with his minister something um, which in other nations is a monthly affair to the f uh, that effect uh, there are no checks and balances and no follow-up uh, on uh, project execution levels which is a sign of non-existence uh, controls projects are initiated and launched uh, for exam for execution with no steering committee to monitor progress and deliver them okay with all this in place uh, the slogan 2035 would remain a dream never to come true i am mr jn kudos to apostle ambe he is a daniel brought to judgment please for his contact Atta writing from Bello. those who want uh, their numbers can you just write to me after the program it's difficult for me to be reading and then sending their numbers just write me after the program i'll share their numbers to you good evening mr Liu. i'm enjoying the program kelly writing from kumba good evening mr kum vision 2035 was a political statement so people should not hope for it how many politicians have ever kept uh, to the awards in this country good evening mr Liu. this is by manuel writing from punjab india I wish to ask uh, you and the panelists uh, this question. Where are our Cameroon leaders leading us to? An emerging Cameroon or to the grave, okay? Good evening, Mr. Leo. This is Ache Emos Bong writing from Likumba. You and your panelists are doing a great job today. People like uh, uh, Dr. Ako, John, are supposed to be ministers in this country because he knows everything in this country. Long live to you. Uh, you are just uh, like John the Baptist in the Bible. Good evening, Mr. Liu. I'm Tiku Anta writing from Kumba. Your program today is very interesting. God bless your panelists. I love them so, so much. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Aku. Thank you for coming. Yeah, Leo, the pleasure is mine. One of the things, uh, we, let's just wrap up. There is no nation that has developed without the diaspora. Okay. The Nigerian diaspora is doing great for their nation. Let's ask. A lot of Nigerians are coming back home to invest. There's a need to reconcile. The next diaspora is that of Ethiopia. The emergence of Ethiopia, part of it, is coming from the diaspora investment. We need to encourage our diaspora. Let's con stop considering diaspora as political enemies and consider them as actors that equally had a lot in human resources to offer. We need to reconcile with our diaspora. Why not? In some country, the Minister of External Relations has been named Minister for External Relations and the diaspora. So why not take care of the diaspora and equally answer to a lot of their worries to get them integrated in human and economic development of the nation. Okay. Thank you too for coming, Apostle Ambi. Thank you, Mr. Lee. It's always a joy to be here. We <coughs> want to thank you all who took time off to watch this edition of the program. Thank you, Eli and Desmond, for production. Stay blessed. Bye-bye.